Hi everyone. In this video, I wanted to provide a demonstration of how to test the difference between groups in an indirect effect using the Amos program. So in this demonstration, I'm basically pivoting off of a present, previous presentation on multi-group analysis or multi-group path analysis, uh, where I went over uh, this example right here. We were basically testing the difference in parameters between uh, two groups. Basically, one group was comprised of 209 girls and the other group was comprised of 207 boys. And the demonstration is, is based off of one that's given in the Amos 24 Users Guide. Uh, that was uh, example 11. So what I'll do is I'll make sure to include a link underneath the video description uh, to that previous presentation if you want to learn more uh, about what I did in that particular uh, demo. So the basic model, as you can see right here, we have four exogenous variables. We have GPA, we have height, weight, and rating. And two endogenous variables are academic and attract. So you can see that uh, the academic variable is being predicted by GPA only uh, as the exogenous uh, variable, and then also the attract variable. And then we have uh, the attract variable being predicted by uh, the exogenous variables height, weight, and rating, as well as the uh, academic variable. So for this demonstration, what I wanted to sh show you is uh, how to test for differences between groups on indirect effects by essentially um, uh, calculating the indirect effect of GPA on a track in each group and then testing the difference. So essentially what we're going to do is the indirect effect is being specified as uh, uh, GPA predicts academic and academic predicts attract. So the indirect effect of GPA on attract is actually calculated as a product of these two path coefficients. It's A and B right here, or if I wanted to label it B, uh, P1 and P2 for path 1 and path 2, uh, that's actually going to be the labeling that we use in the AMOS program. Okay, so here we have uh, a diagram of the model, and the data for each of the two groups has already been entered. I'll show you up here. You can see I've got girls and boys right here. When I go over here to select data, you can see there's a data set for the girls, the data set for the boys. I'll include links to this particular Amos file as well as those two data sets underneath the video description if you want to practice with this. Um, and basically what we're going to do is uh, to, to test for the difference in indirect effects of GPA on attract, what we're going to have to do is to use the user defined estimates option in the Amos program. Uh, but before we do that, we're going to need to uh, label those two paths for each of the two groups. So I'm going to start by going up to where it says girls right here, and I'm going to right click on this first path, go to object properties, and uh, sometimes you have to kind of mess around with it a little bit, but there you go. And where it says regression weight, I'm going to type in P1, um, and I'll actually add a 1 right there. And the second one, I'm just going to use that to refer to the first group, basically our girls. And um, now the other thing to note, too, is that I want to click off of this button that says all groups. Because when that button is clicked and a label is added, it's going to assign the same label to both of the two groups, and I don't want that to occur. So I want uh, the path to be uniquely estimated in each group. So that's why I removed that, that button right there. Um, then I'll go back to boys, and I'm going to name this path. I'll just call it P12. Uh, that's basically for group two. All right, so then from the path from academic to attract, I'm going to do the same thing. I'll go back to my girls right there and click off of all groups. And I'll call this, I'll label this P21. And for boys, I will label this uh, P22. Okay. Now, in my previous presentation, I think uh, the path from academic to attract, I'd label uh, P5 or something like that. But we're, uh, this is a little bit different. Um, it's just a difference in the labeling that I'm showing you right here, but uh, the same principles hold. Okay, so now we've got um, our labels assigned to each of these two parameters for, um, for the, the uh, girls and boys groups. So then the next step is to uh, request the user defined estimates option. So down at the bottom right here, you can see it. Uh, it says not estimating any user defined estimates. So I'm going to have to click 
down here and then click on this button for define new S demand. So I'm going to click on that and a box is going to open up. And so this is where I'm going to uh, calculate the indirect effects for each group as well as the difference in the indirect effects for the two groups. So I'm just going to go ahead and add a little comment here. I'll just uh, uh, use an apostrophe and I'm going to type in indirect effect for uh, girls. And then uh, next what I'll do is I will uh, calculate the indirect effect. I'll just call it uh, the S command, IEG for indirect effect for the girls. And I'll set that equal to P11 asterisk P21. Um, um, okay. And so the P11, that is the path name for uh, the path from DPA to academic for the girls. And then P21 is the uh, label associated with the uh, path from academic to attract for girls. So next, what I'll do is I will um, create another little comment over here. I'll just call this indirect effect for boys. So I'll call it, so the estimate, I'll just call this IEB. And I'll set this equal to P12 times P22. Okay, and so now uh, th that's basically using the labels for the boys group. All right, so now what I'll do is I will uh, create another little comment here. I'll just call this the distance in indirect effect. And so in this case, I, I'll just call this uh, diff for the estimated name, and I'll say equals IEG minus IEB. All right, and so at this point, I want to check my syntax. I'm going to click this little button right here, and you'll see it says syntax is okay. And so now I can proceed. What I need to do is to save this file, uh, this uh, containing the estimate. So I'm going to go back under File and then Save As. And I'll give it a name. I'll just call this uh, Indirect Effects. Or indirect Effect. And uh, I'll type Enter. And so now you can see at the bottom of the screen over here, now it's, oh, excuse me, um, it's not been saved. Sorry about that. Let me re redo this again. So we'll save this as. I guess it had been, okay. So we'll uh, save that again, save over it, I guess. And when we close this out, sorry about that. Um, you can see that now at the bottom of the screen, it says estimating indirect effect. So you gotta close the box out in order for it to show up in the little bottom left-hand corner. So the next thing is we're gonna go to uh, analysis properties. And under uh, bootstrap right here, uh, I'm gonna, uh, essentially click on perform bootstrap and I'll set this for 2000 I'll request bias corrected confidence intervals set this for 95 percent and so what we're going to do is essentially uh, we're going to generate a confidence interval on each of the indirect effects the one for the girls group and the one for the boys group and then we're going to generate uh, we're also going to be generating a bootstrap confidence interval around the difference in the indirect effects so because we have, um, because the data itself is actually um, summary data, if I, I'll just kind of show you really quickly. I'll open up one of these and we'll view it. You can see it's a correlation matrix along with mean standard deviations and sample sizes. We can't use bootstrapping in the conventional sense because um, the typical way that we would bootstrap would be to draw random samples from the raw data itself. And we can't really do that in this case. Uh, because we have summary data. So what we're going to do in this case is request uh, the, um, we'll go back in here, and we're going to request the Monte Carlo parametric bootstrap. So if we had two groups worth of data, the raw data, then we would not be selecting this. We would just perform the bootstrap based on these selections right here. But because we don't have the raw data and we want to use a parametric bootstrap, uh, uh, given that we have summary data, we're clicking on Monte Carlo parametric bootstrap right here. The other thing to note too is that uh, if you have any missing data in your data file and you're, and you're performing a bootstrap that uh, involves the raw data itself, it's not going to run. So you have to have a complete data set in Amos, the raw data set in Amos, if you're going to perform a standard bootstrap. So that's one of the kind of limitations of the, of the program. So we'll go ahead and close this out. And now I'm going to click on Calculate Estimates. And so it's now performed the bootstrapping. So I'm going to go under 
uh, view text right here. Uh, you, you have your standard output. There's the model fit information right there. This is the same information that we had previously in, in, in my earlier uh, demonstration. Mainly, we want to focus on going to the estimates tab right here. So I'm going to double click on that, then click on scalers right here, actually double click on it, and then go down to user defined estimates. So now when we have the user defined estimates, you can see that I've got this is the unstandardized indirect effect for the girls. This is the unstandardized indirect effect for the boys. And then this is the difference between those two indirect effects. Now, if I want to test the difference between the two groups, I can go down, uh, keeping this highlighted right here, I'll go down to bootstrap confidence right here. And uh, we'll kind of scroll back down here and you'll see it says user defined estimates. And now you've got confidence intervals that are given along with the actual estimates. So there's the, the these are the estimates I was just telling you about. Those are the indirect effects for the two groups and the difference. And then we've got our bootstrap 95% uh, confidence intervals uh, where we have the lower bound and the upper bound that, that, that are given for each uh, of those effects. So the lower bound and the upper bound for the uh, indirect effect um, in the uh, girls group is 0.02 and 0.06 respectively. And if zero, which is our null, falls between the lower and the upper bound, then we would infer that the indirect effect is not significantly different from zero. If it falls outside the lower bound, lower and upper bound, then we would infer that, that the indirect effect is significantly different from zero. So right here, we would see then that the uh, indirect effect uh, in the girls group is statistically significantly different from zero. Uh, when we look at it in the boys group right here, it's 0.06 to 0.048 for the confidence interval. Obviously, then we would uh, reject the null and infer that the indirect effect in the boys group is uh, significant. And then the last, you can see we have the lower and upper bound for the difference in the indirect effects. So if zero falls between the lower and the upper bound um, uh, for this particular confidence interval, then we would infer that there's no difference in the indirect effects uh, between the two groups. Um, if zero falls outside the lower and the upper bound, then we would infer that there is a significant difference. And you can see right here, the zero does fall between the lower and the upper bound, um, which would indicate to us that we have uh, no difference between the two groups when it comes to the indirect effect that we are testing. Okay, so that uh, pretty well uh, wraps up this presentation. Um, like I said, I, this was just kind of an extension of what I had talked about in uh, my previous presentation. Uh, and obviously you can generalize this out to multiple paths and multiple indirect effects within your model. So that concludes this demonstration and I appreciate you watching.